Greetings, Graham Roberts here. We're going to be looking at Visual C Sharp. Now the reason we're looking at this is because of a request. Uh, someone has to use Visual C Sharp because they are uh, blind and NetBeans doesn't really work with their helper um, software. Whereas apparently C Sharp does cooperate with the software. So I'm just going to show a couple of things that you can do. Um, there may be a series. Uh, I don't know. It depends on what uh, what's required. As we may know, uh, C Sharp is um, very similar to Java, and is Microsoft's solution. I I love the way they very so positive that when you start off a project, it's not so much a project; it's a solution. It's as if it's absolutely guaranteed you'll succeed. But anyways, what we're going to do in C Sharp Express I'm using, um, I'm going to do file a new project and uh, we're going to use a Windows Forms application obviously, uh, that's what we want. I don't care about the name of it down here, I really don't care, first time ever. So let's um, do that. Now it gives me a toolbox on the left hand side and in the middle there's a pane uh, with a form in it and on the right hand side I've got what is called the Solution Explorer which is a kind of fancy way to say the components of my objects, uh, sorry, of my application. Right, so what we're going to do, well the very first thing we do really is to bring onto the form a button. Now this is because uh, we're going to exploit event-driven uh, programming here, and the button's always good for that. We can change what's on the button, um, but I'm not going to bother with that as a legend. I'm just going to let it be called button one click as well, default name. By double-clicking on clicking on it, I've, I've created an event handler. And as usual, the event handler, I say usual for Microsoft.NET products, where .NET, by the way, is the equivalent to the Java virtual machine that uh, is used uh, by, well, funny enough, Java for um, the byte code that we create when we compile this. Anyway, moving on. What are we going to do in here? Well, we're going to access the uh, combo box, which doesn't exist yet, and we're going to put whatever's selected in the combo box into a text field. So clearly what we need is a text field. Uh, what do they call it here? Well we could have a rich text box. We don't really want that. What we want is a nice and simple uh, text field or text box which is here. Rich text fields tend to have special fonts and color um, um, and so on. We're not interested in that. We just want to show uh, a string in here. So there we've got the text field which gets the uh, default name of text box 1. If you're familiar with it, just like the um, old-fashioned uh, Visual Basic.net does. So what we're going to do next is get a combo box and in this system uh, we could have a list box by the way. Well we might have a show of that in a moment. But let's use the combo box which is uh, cunningly called combo box just here. Okay, so that's got a list in it that we can't see at design uh, stage uh, as we could at runtime. Let's just see what we've got when we run this. There we are, that's what we've got. There's nothing in it at the moment. Oh, fair enough. Let's move back into design phase. Well, uh, what we need to do first of all is populate this combo box. By populate I mean we need to look at the properties and find a way of putting uh, new items into it. Now it, uh, it seems a good idea to go to items for that. If we click on items we get an ellipsis which means more information if you click here which we will. and. I can put my colors into here that we're going to uh, choose. So just bear with me a moment. If you've seen my Java 
tutorials on a similar subject, that is combo box, you'll know that there's really nothing new under the sun, anyway, my sun. I'm going to do much the same thing. So I'm going to click in there, and now I put in some um, colors. Now, the names for colors, anyway. And uh, we've got something in there, we can now get something out of there. But the aim is to click this button here and put what was is selected in that box into here. Let's run it so we can see what we're trying to do. So there we are. I'm going to select green. I click the button but nothing happens in terms of putting that into there because I haven't actually asked for it. So we need to actually do that now. I'm getting a little bit fed up with button 1 as a legend so I'm going to see if I can change that. Now if I double click on it it gives me the handler. How could I actually edit it. Well it turns out we can edit it in the properties because there's a name and that's not it. We don't want to change the name. We've already got the event handle with that name in it and frankly we don't really care about that for this exercise. What we want to do is actually change the text property of that object. So we go to say click me and uh, we've got what we want. Okay so we're delaying the inevitable what we're going to do we, we double click on here again go back to this um, event handler and we need to type something in here that will kind of save the day what do we type in there well first of all we do know that the text box uh, is needing to be given a value uh, now it doesn't use a setter in this case it's a direct property assignment so we're going to say uh, text box one text equals and I'm just going to put a dummy in there for the moment just so you can I've got to have a semicolon just there you go I just click off and you can see it's a happy bunny there so we don't want to put a null string in there of course not what we want to do is to put into there what was in the combo box now What's the combo box called? Well, it's called bo combo box one. The intelligence sense, I think that's what Microsoft call it, is telling me that's what it is. Obviously, I want a property of that, and it could be the get selected item, or it could be a uh, selected item. Let's let's have a look. If if I type S, it will give me selected index or uh, selected. Uh, oh, anyway, we can see now. Can we see selected item? So I'm going to go for that. That seems a good idea. Is it a method? Well, it seems they don't use setters and getters. So we just um, click there and say that we want to turn that to a string because it's uh, some kind of object at the moment. Uh, we could find out, but uh, anyway, we want to make sure it's a string and because we're putting into an object that accepts strings. A string is a method, so we're going to need the um, the brackets there. That's looking good, isn't it? So let's see if that works. We we'll save our program. Doesn't really matter any of that. Um, you save it where you want to when you do yours. Uh, so you can find it again anyway. And I'll run it. And I've got the colours. I'm going to go for purple. And there we have purple. What if I want no, no, no? I want blue. So I click there and I get blue. So there you are. You have a J box. Uh, sorry, <laughs> you have a combo box in C sharp working uh, very similarly to how it would work in VB.net or indeed in Java. Um, not really very dissimilar. Now finally, I'm going to just show what we do if it was a list box. So I just click that off, close it down. Well, if it's a list box, clearly we're going to need to have a list box on here. So let's put a list box here. Just widen that out a little bit. Uh, it's good that it's got an auto layout manager, just like uh, NetBeans has. Uh, or maybe it's the other way around. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt there. So who's first with this kind of idea of visual frames and forms? Let's give it to Microsoft for the moment. Anyway. Um, here we have it, list box one. What are we going to do with that? Well, we're going to do exactly the same. Let's go to click me, and uh, I'm going to say no. I don't want that after all. I'm going to comment that out so it turns green. Yeah. And so what I'm going to do now is put in a similar statement and see if that works. So 
let's try that if I put in there same thing but I'm going to change it to you never guess I think it's list box one let's see what it is is it list box one looks like it. it let's see if it's got selected item to string well, it's not complaining so it's looking like it's the same idea let's run that I'm forgetting something aren't I it's got nothing in it so <laughs> not terribly clever let's go back uh, someone once asked me uh, Graham do you script your tutorials <laughs> I think you know that I don't now anyway uh, what we're going to do is uh, populate that list box so back on the form here I'm going to click on the list box and uh, we're going to say the same old trick you know um, so let's put some other colors in there we have yellow and we have pink and we have uh, cyan now cyan is a very light blue color and we have one I'm going to make up called well I'm not I, I'm gonna get mail now I'm gonna try and call this turquoise it's probably someone's gonna tell me that's the wrong spelling anyway I'm gonna put that in there because I'm brave foolish but brave and I'm going to run this and hope aha, that it does what uh, what we we said it should so if I click on there oh yes it does and we get turquoise or whatever that is and um, so now we can use a list box or a combo box with this uh, text box either objects when we uh, want to put the code into action can message send and receive from the text box we can also add and remove items in the code now it turns out really uh, the best place to add that isn't so much here where you could do it after initialize components as in form one load because that's an initialization activity so what we can do here is say we want list box one dot now if you look through the list you can see it's items actually uh, not direct add as it would be in Java and here we can use the add method and we're going to add a, a color green which we don't have at the moment this is only going into the list box though so let's have a look at see if we can put that into also into the combo box so as we have to remember what the names were I think that's correct so we, we save that and remember this is on form load so right at the beginning these should be added not in the uh, collection um, design uh, way that we showed and there's green obviously it's not going to actually add because we've commented that out but here now you may have seen a little pop-up um, error there what I've done is I've taken off the two string method and put in a string cast I'm not quite sure why it didn't like what I did and again not really caring at the moment because uh, C sharp is not a language um, I I use very much at all um, for many reasons mainly because uh, other people don't use it um, anyway we've got um, this working and I'll just run that so you can see where we've got um, it popping up in here as we saw before click green and it comes in here okay well good luck with your C sharping <laughs>